Hi, this is Myra with Boutique Paint. Today I am making some decorative screws. Um, the reason why I'm making decorative screws is because it occurred to me that I didn't want just um, regular screws with the ugly head. I'm going to use this for my display for my D new DIY paints in the shop. And I didn't want just the screw head showing. And so I thought, well, what could I do? And then it occurred to me, I had done this once before. I just had forgotten I had done it. I had made some of the rosettes and then I had glued it on. This time, because I'm afraid people are going to take this on and off, that it might get knocked and the glue might wiggle off, loose and the piece would fall off. So this time I'm going to embed it into the resin while I'm doing it. Now, if you wanted to do this for like a uh, decorative piece, like if you have a frame that has either a ribbon or um, like string, um, which is kind of popular right now to do, you know, something hanging up off the frame or what, whatnot as far as art, you could do one of these and then you don't have the screw showing. You don't have to worry about doing a bow or something there. Um, so this works out pretty well. So I'll show you what I'm thinking here. This is not what I'm planning to do. That was left over from um, another project and I hadn't poured the um, resin in it. So if I have a little left over, I will make one of those. So because we are taking the part that the drill bit goes into, or not, then how are we going to screw this into, you know, the wall or wood or whatever we're going to use? You're going to take a drill bit and you want the drill bit, if you line it up with the screw, I don't know if you can see that, or maybe if I flip this over, it'll be, oh, that's not much better. That's really, my molds are dirty on the back. You want it to be either the same size as the inside of the screw from here to here or a little bit smaller. So I would use for this that size of a drill bit. So just kind of eyeball it, put it next to each other. If you can only see the um, outer part of the screw, then that's probably a, a pretty good size. And if you're going to do this for like a wall hanging or whatnot, use a shorter screw. You don't need a two inch screw or an inch and a half screw. Um, I'm using really big screws and this size screw for this project. Um, but yeah, if you're gonna do it for a wall hanging, I would do like maybe an inch and a quarter. All right, so let's go ahead and get those flipped back over. And you could do this with several of, well, you could do it with any of the molds. Honestly, you could do, oh, I don't know how the Christmas one got in there. I'm not sure how the sunflower got in there. I guess it, you could do a butterfly though. Well, you could do Christmas, I guess. <laughs> you could do the bow for the last Christmas uh, release. That's That would be fun. So what I'm going to do is I've made these little foam squares. And this is just, you know, foam from a package. And I just cut, I painted it green for a different project, but I just cut little squares. And you can use um, a kitchen knife or you can use a utility knife. Just try to make as clean a cut as possible. As you can see, there's all of these and you don't want that to go into your mold. So I'm just kind of, you know, making sure none of that goes on. Get it out of there. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to push my screw through. Now you can do it one of two ways. You can either just push it through. But the problem with that is it makes a mess. But that's okay. You can just clean up the mess, right? Or you can, I'm going to do this with a long one. You can get it started by just starting the screw and then taking your screw gun or a screwdriver suggest a screw gun just because it's faster, especially if you're going to do, you know, a number of them. Okay. 
All right. So what we want is a little bit of the head sticking out. So basically what this is going to do is it's going to set on top. That's in a little bit too much. Set on top so that the it holds the screw in place because you don't want to be sitting there for 10 minutes doing this, waiting for your um, resin to dry. I mean, that. I mean, you may want to do that. I don't want to do that. So that's why I came up with this. You could also do it probably with like a piece of cardboard. Um, that would work well. You know, a thick piece of cardboard probably work really well too. All right, so we're going to make sure we don't have any of those foam pieces in our molds. My knife. Those little, they're staticky, so they get everywhere. It makes you crazy. Okay, so we're going to do the ama amazing casting resin, which is what I use probably 99.9% .9 of the time because it's fast. It cures in 10 minutes. And I'm going to do a half batch here. So I'm going to, I only filled this halfway up. And that's part A. I'm going to do part B and this dries in about 10 minutes, depending on temperature and humidity. And it also dries white. Unless you add something to it. Like mecha powers, mica powers. I'm not sure how that's said. I think I always get it wrong. And then we're going to stir it. You can start feeling it heat up and turn kind of a milky color. It's probably hard to see. I like to stir it long enough so I can start feeling it heat up. If it's a brand new bottle, if it's brand new bottles, um, you don't have to stir it this much. It will heat up pretty quickly. And I do that one and I am not going to pour this all the way to the top. Although I just did <laughs> do what I say, not as I do. And that same one. Okay. That's that one's pretty close. I think I'll do this flower. There we go. Two reasons why you don't want to fill it to the top. You don't want the resin sticking to this. Not a big deal if it does. You can just probably pull it off. But also, um, once you start putting this in there, it's going to displace some of the resin. Let's see. I think I was going to do this one over here. That's hard because I'm so used to pouring them pretty full. Let's do this one just for fun because it's got the color in it. And we'll do a bigger flower. Um, yeah, do that flower. So I'm only going to have that much coming through the foam and you're going to want to kind of look from the side. So you're getting it kind of centered. Let's see. I want a long one. I hope I did enough long ones. Okay. We'll do a short one for this one. Do the longer ones. That square was almost not big enough, but it is working.
And you can always kind of give it a twist. And make sure that it's down far enough. You should be able to feel what it's doing. Oh, I can tell that's off a little bit. Nope, it was perfect. Leave it alone. Um, if you don't feel like your screw is going up and down, straight up and down, you can wiggle it around on this and kind of get it where you think it needs to be. Oop, this one's drying on me. I better get something on that quick. And that one pushed product out because it did start to harden on me already. And that one I'm just going to leave because I don't think I can. No, well, let's just try it. Nope, it's it's just going to be a medallion. All right, so we'll let this set up and then we'll pull them. All right, so we're set up and I had pulled out a couple. And this one is stuck to the foam. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my utility knife and I'm just going to tuck it in there. And then I'm just going to spin this. And it's best to do this right when it comes out because it's still soft. And these will keep curing and it'll make it really nice and hard. Right now these are a little bit on the soft side. As you can see, I, they can still be um, moved around. And if you have a little bit of goobers on the side here, I'm going to wait until this is completely cured and then I'll cut these off. And usually I just take my fingernail and pull it. Um, but I don't want to do a lot of that right now because they are still a little bit soft. Now these ones I had over pour, so it'll be interesting to see what happened with these. So when basically what happened is when I pushed the screw down into it, there was too much resin in there. And so it kind of poured out over the sides. So I'm just going to, and that's one of the advantages of having the rim around these is for projects like this. So I'm going to go ahead and take my knife again and I'll get it loosened up. I got it in there too far so it's hitting on the screw. Basically you're just going to spin it. Be careful. No cutting yourself against the rules. Once again, this is still soft. And so this one didn't get completely covered over, but it'll still work. So I'm going to just take my fingernails, go along, and pull off the extra. You could use some little embroidery scissors too. And clean those up pull that one and that one came out really nice so let me show you the back of that so that's that's what happens when you pour a little bit under and then you make sure the screw is down there these aside and then we're gonna paint these guys now for the shop I was thinking I could just paint them white and I thought that's kind of boring so I might do a little bit of gold and then a little bit of um, a color over it and then do a wipe back, a wipe back. Nice thing about doing the gold is if any part of the screw shows, it kind of ties it in. For what I'm doing it for, it will work. These would also would be super cute in your craft room if you're wanting to hang anything. You just don't want screws showing. You could do a whole row of these. It'd be pretty sweet. I just got through hanging up a bunch of... I'm, I don't have any more room in this building that I keep everything in. Um, I keep all my stock in here and then I do my videos from here. And I am just plain and simply running out of room. 
So I got the brushes in and I put screws on the wall. Not pretty screws, ugly screws on the wall. So I'll have to do some of these up for in here um, to hang stock on. When you run out of shelf space, you got to go on the walls. I have little short, little pieces of wall, about two, two feet wide in between shelves of paint and IOD and stencils. And now the new and fabulous paintbrushes. Oh, I like that. That is really very pretty just in the gold. So I dried these and I'm just using a piece of foam to hold it in place. But I wanted to point out a couple things. This one here is this mold. But I didn't pour it all the way full. And I'm not sure if you can see, but there's holes through it here. And it really kind of adds a little bit of extra detail in the mold itself, which I thought was kind of cool. So that's one of the advantages also of not filling something up completely. Sometimes you come up with stuff like that. This one was with the mica powders. And um, so it was painted, the powders were painted in. And I had done this for a different project and just hadn't poured it. So I thought, well, I want to use this one. It still had some of the powder in it. So um, after I pulled it, I just put a little bit of the gold on top, kind of a dry brush, and it turned out just super pretty. So I wanted to show you that before I restarted um, painting. So I'm going to use, on some of them, I'm going to use um, DIY's White Swan. And then I think I'm also going to use um, Old 57 on some of them. And I get a couple paintbrushes here. Oh, I got it screwed in there. I couldn't pull it out. So I'm just going to kind of give it the same feel of a dry brush uh, paint on here. Or you can paint it on and rub it back. Um, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do with this one. I'm just going to go ahead That's pretty just the way it is. Let's take a little bit of a paper towel and just pull back a little bit of that. That turned out nice. Let's try it with the white, white paint on the flowers here. Oop, that's not my paint brushes. Um, let's see, find the paint brush I want. I wanted a flat one, so I'll use this. So I'm just using the flat side of the brush after taking some of the paint off. If you're worried that you're going to um, get too much paint on it still, you can use a paper towel and just kind of blot it off a little bit and then go on it. show you what that looks like when you do it that way. So I'm just going to take some of that paint off. So you can see there's not much on there. And then just kind of take it and pull it towards the outside. Like that. And if you don't like it, if it's too heavy, just like I said, and if you don't like it that way, then take a wet paper towel and pull some of it back. But that's them. I think they're turning out pretty. Um, yeah, so you can make them in any size. Like I said, you could do butterflies. You could do the mushrooms. That would be kind of fun if you had something kind of botanical to hang. And then you do um, like this little guy here. Or this, this guy would really make a, a great one. So anyway, that's our project for today. If you have any questions, you can go to our website at www.boutiquepaint.com or you can leave a comment below. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye.